Good morning and welcome. We are here for episode six of uh, Three Feet from Gold, Stop Planning. My name is Jeremy Murphy. I'm a positivity coach, health coach, running coach in Lincoln, Nebraska, also creator of the Positivity Patrol. And I'm joined by my good friend, Ha Tran. Hello, my name is Ha Tran, and I am a uh, motivational speaker, a published author, and a navigational coach. And my office is uh, located in Beverly, Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, before we get into the show's content, we do have some brief housekeeping to take care of. Uh, we did ask for consent of the Napoleon Hill Foundation to broadcast this show series and to use the title and they gave consent. And so they asked us to read this into the uh, record. Three Feet from Gold is used with the consent of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. However, the foundation has no control over and does not endorse the blab.im platform or content. To learn more about the Napoleon Hill Foundation, go to www.naphill.org. They're doing wonderful work around the world and uh, it's just helping thousands of people, maybe millions at this point. So. Uh, check out their website. It's a wonderful uh, work that they do around the world. Hey, uh, Jeremy, what do you think about the title? Stop planning. I, I love this title. It, it's a contrarian title that cuts against the conventional wisdom. And uh, as a contrarian, that that really uh, suits me pretty well. I, I, I love the title. It, it's uh, It challenges that conventional wisdom that we have to plan every step of our day. You know, it did take me back a little bit because when I, um, because uh, I always planning thing and I always think that in order for you to get point A and point B, uh, you need to have the strategy, the way how to get there. And uh, to me, a planning is a pretty much the, 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 the not the way, the, the right way to do it. Right. And um, so when he said that, um, stop planning and um it, and then I, I, I startled a little bit and I said, stop planning. If I hear him right, uh, you know, and so I would come back and to read it. And um, I certainly found some wisdom uh, uh, on that because uh, he didn't say that, you know, don't do anything about it. You know, he said that you need to know your destination, but you need to aim on that direction. And then you have to have your eyes open and you'll be flexible on your approach. And that is what I buy in. That's very good advice and uh, sage advice that I think a lot of us tend to learn the hard way, unfortunately. Do you agree? Yes. No, because see, people are gun ho into it. You know, I, I must True. know, you know, from point one, point two. But, you know, something uh, through my journey, uh, I also learned that if you know how to get from point A to point B, that your goal to small. Do that's you, that's excellent. I they, we don't think of things in that terms until we get to point B and we say, wait a minute. I thought this would be more difficult, more challenging. What, what? Why did I even set this as the goal? I should have set it higher or further away, further out. Yeah, you you know because if you think through it and you would just say, if you can see every step of the way, your goal is definitely too small. Mm -hmm. And then you know, and then the the small goal, it it really. It, won't excited you. So right. I, I think that we have to have our dream and our goal is uh, big and we have to tiptoe uh, ourselves and to reach for our goal. Um, my mentor, um, Les Brown, he said, uh, see, um, he said, shoot for the moon, even though if you miss it, you still lay it among the star. And, um, and, and, and I love that, that idea very, very much. You know, you, you have to aim high because, it, you know, it's, it's so unfortunate. We aim so low and we hit the, 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 the target. And, and I think it's, it's a great quote because it, it really emphasizes that we can, uh, if we get that kind of momentum and launch and get off the ground and we're, we're thousands of miles out, you know, may, maybe we will hit things that are beyond the uh, the target goal that we've set. We may hit something that's possibly even beyond that. Just yeah, with momentum. I, right, the momentum. And then, you know, and uh, the, the chapter A is stop planning. And that is the, um, uh, the, that the, the, the station that Craig happened to stop by. And that when he met um, the two, what is his name? Uh, to Kathy, to it, Kathy, who right. is the the CEO of the Chick Fil A, mm -hmm. and that uh, when he asking the gentleman, he said, um, 
um, would you know what worked for you or, or how you get there? And he said, um, I'm not planning too much. And and Craig was just like, just like me. He's surprised and he just say, what? And he said, hey, I don't know what about anybody tell you, but it worked for me that I don't planning too much. That's True. how I get there. And it does capture their spontaneous moments where things will surface that we haven't anticipated and we're able to make a decision on, on the spot, sort of. You know, we, we can't plan every step because of every unexpected thing that can change the whole path. Yeah, and, um, you know, and again, we all have the experience of, um, you know, when we have some dream and we want to realize our dream, we we almost have like, okay, the dream become a goal when we start to write down and we pursue it and with um, all our might, with our all. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and for true, it, Kathy said that, um, uh, stop planning. So uh, tell me your take on that. I think it's meaningful to write the goals down. I, I think if we're using more of our senses, they tend to sink in a little more. And I, I know some people have said, you need to write down your goals daily. And, and I think that might be a little bit uh, too much uh, potentially, but I, I think we need to set maybe weekly goals, uh, monthly goals, quarterly goals, annual goals, and reevaluate those periodically because we'll, we'll reach some of them. And then, like you said earlier, we, we have to set goals higher. We, we have to be aspirational in our goal setting and not uh, be weighed down by, uh, oh, well, the, I, I'm going to go after all the low hanging fruit goals that I can achieve. There, there's value in incrementalism, but there's also a lot of value in, in not over planning how you get there because you know how you get there may be entirely different than you expect. And that may be the path that's successful. You, you know, one of the things that I have to credit to my success is that I have the ability to do the reverse engineering mm -hmm. um, from my ultimate goal. Right. Um, then I want to work backward, you know, to have, because that is, when you work backward, you pretty much more stay in line, concentrate on the, sure. the, the, the path. So um, I, I will go from... I'm not stuck from there, but again, I, I will just go trickle back down and you see, okay, what do I need to do in order for me to, to get there? Right. Um, but, but again, that is my, my own uh, way of thinking. Um, be, be, but uh, for me, um, uh, in the process that you, you're just talking about, I, I think that um, the question is uh, many people talking about how do you eat the elephant? One bait at a time, right? Yes. So, and then, then so that is, you have a gigantic goal, that is the elephant, but then you have to break down to, get like that, your ultimate goal, and you have to break down to 10 years ago, five years ago, one year, and, you know, and then you do the quarterly, you do monthly, and you do um, weekly, um, because I think it's important, because see, the sooner you see that you're off course, you can correct it, if you True. know sooner because you know you don't want to um uh, let's say for 2016 uh, you want to accomplish something and you don't do not review it you do not um uh, revise it and you keep on going the same directions and the further you away from go the harder for you to correct your course to get there true right Yes, that's, uh, I, you know, you brought up the uh, the elephant issue, and that reminds me of that book, um, uh, Eat That Frog, uh, uh -huh. where, where you, uh, you you pursue the, the most challenging task first and push that out of the way, and then you can move down, down the list to things that are less challenging. And if you accomplish the most difficult thing first, it, it gives you momentum, confidence, uh, mojo, uh, just gives you uh, the inner self-confidence that, that you can't be stopped, that you're not going to be knocked down and you're, you're going to arrive at your destination regardless of what it takes to get there. You know, Brian Tracy is a prolific writer. He has many books published. But the one thing that um, if you're asking me, what do I think about um, uh, what I remember uh, or what first come in my mind when I'm talking about Brian Tracy and his book, uh, I, I will remember the, the book that he wrote about the time management, about 
eat mm. that frog. Right. You know, the bigger, the ugliest, you know, the, that is, uh, you want to eat it first. Then, um, but you know, that, that's again different school of thought to the, some people want to get a uh, little thing done and then they, because they want to get their accomplishment in uh, under their belt and you know, you know that right. they do something good. And um, because uh, eating the frog, it can be at first a challenge, might take a little bit of time. Um, but you and I, I think that the, we have that conversation before, we want to feel a, a, such an accomplishment by eating that frog first, because if we can conquer that, there's nothing else that we can do, right, after that. That's true. That You know, it does, uh, it also deals with fear in a very direct way. A lot of us have the fear of the biggest, most difficult, challenging thing, and we just feel like, oh, we can't, we start telling ourselves we, we can't do this. And, and so taking the contrarian direction, it does, it, it is a direct attack in that fear. And it, it really displaces the fear and makes it more into belief and confidence that we can accomplish what we're trying to do, right? Yeah, see that they, they dance around the issue and it become a procrastinating, oh, right? True. Because yeah, you know, you, 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 yeah, because it's something that if you get into it, no, you want to do something, it just you dance around the issues mm -hmm. and you avoid the, what is matter most. True. And um, you know, let's let go, let's go back to um, to the um, the stop planning. So, have you ever do anything that you have not planning or you planning but planning loosely, you will uh, focus on get to the intended outcome, but you don't stick into every um, every step that you have planted in your mind. Now, having asking you that question, I will tell you that I, I think that the plan is there for us to follow and for us to correct and for us to change. But some, some people thinking that the plan is just like, that is the role exactly that they must take in order for them to get to the place that they need it to. I, I, you agree with me on that? Yes, it, it's a great question. And I think uh, I, I've learned time and time again that uh, we, we just, we don't know where every step falls. We, we know that there's another step and, and hopefully we can see where that step is because that's important. You don't want to take a step if you can't see the next step. Um, but, but I think we have to be a little bit flexible. You know, it, it's like climbing a mountain. You can't, the, the safest passage might not be the one that it appears to be from the bottom of the mountain. You have to take into account of changing weather, avalanches, um, trees down blocking your path, uh, you know, temperature shifts that might make certain paths more dangerous, rocks, um, irregular surface. I mean, all those things can change the entire path. And so we have to, we have to be flexible. Adaptable. Yeah, we have to be flexible and adaptable, not only on the path, but on each step of the journey, realizing that that step may be safer in a different direction. And sometimes we just, we have to move the safer direction instead of, you know, jumping off without having a step to land on. That, that can be dangerous. Yeah, you know, um, this is not just to entertain you. Um, uh, I, I wrote it down here, um, the, you know, the quote floated out in the internet on a Facebook and everything and said that from uh, Wood, Woody Allen. He said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And, um, you know, um, it is how, how funny that is because he, he, you, you must be flexible on your approach and you must sure. adapt, uh, adaptable to every situation because that's wise, you know, because if you are, it, you know, you, you fo focus to the point that you narrow minded when you just know only one direction and you're neglecting to see there is a other way to get there. Because, you know, sometimes you want to get to some place that there is a few other ways to get there it's not true. the only one that's true and it's uh it's interesting that uh you know plans can change and sometimes the plan or purpose that we have for why we're here changes and we just we we have to really roll with the chaos that may occur realizing that we we can't control the uncontrollable we can't we can expect the unexpected but we can't control the uncontrollable we have to um, really allow some things to happen and, and adjust accordingly and 
like, like you said, be more broad minded that there may be three or four or five paths to take us to the successful path that we're trying to achieve. And we just, we have to be flexible enough to look at all of them on the way up. Yeah, uh, because when I, in the book, I remember uh, to it, uh, Kathy, he, he talking about, you know, I, I, I know what I want. I just get out of the door and I have my oh, my eyes open mm -hmm. because maybe when the neighbor just drive past by and said that, you know, they happen to go that way and they ask if I want to get a ride with them. And that's how beautiful that is. Or, you know, or I, I just happen to find some bicycle or some rolling skate and, uh, you know, because that the vehicle to get there and uh, you know including your your um, uh, the, the, how you want to get there sometimes it changed but again True. you never uh, lose sight of your uh, intended outcome because that is the, the ultimate goal and um, you know uh, do, just like when you do the driving to one place or to another if some accident something happened you have to take the detours to avoid that but you have to remind yourself to get back on the highway in order for you to continue your journey. That's true. And for all of us that are motorists, we know that cars break down and, and or they won't start uh, or you get a flat tire and you have situations where you have to walk or ride a bike, get a ride, take public transportation. I mean, there are endless ways to travel. Sometimes they're not unlimited, but there, there are different ways to get there. It just takes some ingenuity and creativity and looking at all the options, like you said, really looking at what are all the possible ways for me to get there successfully that are realistic and meaningful. Yeah, and then I think that you you, you would be 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 uh, happier too because uh, there is a many way uh, to do everything because it always op uh, is always options you know if right. you if you look it through it and you see uh, whatever the the best way for you uh, then you follow that because you so restrictive and you just follow one and you hit the the the, the brick wall and then you just say oh now what or you you sure. just happen to um uh, to hit the, the the mountain in front of you and uh, because without thinking you decided to move the rock because you thought you can move the mountain but see the thing is the, the act that you want to get to where you need it to, you can do it too without having to move that mountain. True. You know, you can find a way to get there. Yes, and, and we can move mountains, uh, but it, it takes some uh, vision and uh, takes uh, it, it takes looking at every rock that makes up that mountain and, and figuring yeah. out how that rock affects you and how those rocks together affect you. But I, you know, but we have to think about those those rocks can shift. And yeah, but, but you, when yeah. you see that it, they, it, it, I must, you have no ways else True. except to move the mountain. Exactly. Because you can, like I'm talking about the option, you can march around the mountain, you can True. go wherever that is. You know, because see, that what uh, I think that to it, um, Kathy, talking about that, that you have to be flexible, you have to be, uh, you have to see what in front of you, and then you will, will asking yourself a question, how you overcome this, how you conquer in that, mm -hmm. and how, how, how you continue your journey, because the right question will give you the right solutions. True. Yes, we, we have to ask the right questions. And sometimes that takes some digging to get to the questions that are most important. And some of them are are not going to be good enough or meaningful enough to take us to where we want to go. See, and again, not because I want to give you way too much credit, but again, we talk about experience. We talk about experience with your own experience and you start to see things differently. You know, the, the wise and the, the wisdom coming from, uh, from live and learn and experiencing it. True. Yes, experience is a powerful teacher, but we have to uh, we have to remember the lessons that we've learned. I mean, we sometimes we things happen and we don't uh, we don't always uh, remember what happened that may teach us something. Yeah, I I, I agree with you totally. Good job. Just you sleep. You rest. It's okay. Almost done. Okay. Whoever doing what, um, his is uh, um, because that his baby. You know, you, your own baby usually uh, the most beautiful and 
the, because it, that, that's how you you're loyalty to your own brand and then he's certainly exercising that so and let's and let we recap the, um, the 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 lesson on this chapter a stop planning so what is your your, your thought on that what what is the, the takeaway for you I think for me, the the key is uh, uh, flexibility, and, and sometimes we have to take risks in order to uh, achieve our goals or dreams, and, and we have to be flexible in our approach, but uh, to take those calculated risks when necessary and just and just not to over plan everything. We, we plan the important things, but we leave, we plan the, using with the why in mind, but the how. We have to be much more flexible in the how to be successful, in my opinion. That that's the really the salient lesson and purpose that I get from this chapter. I love when uh, yeah, you know the the, the uh, topic of the chapter uh, topic is the title is stop planning, but when you twist it around, you said over planning. I think that what is uh, to it, Kathy want to say, you know, he yeah. just say, okay, you must get out of the, get off the couch and get out the door and march to the direction that you want to, um, you know, and then keep an eyes open for any opportunity, you know, for you to get there faster or, um, you know, just be flexible and then, you know, to, to keep your eyes and ear open and ready to uh, adapt and, uh, and to, to change, you know, because the plan is there to change. True. And then, and, and when, when you said that, uh, uh, you know, the, the chapter, I think that uh, uh, will go to, to surround by uh, do not, not over planning because, um, yes. you know, you, you have to know uh, your intended outcome, you know, your destination, but the, the approach have to be uh, in the softer approach be flexible and be adaptable and keep your eyes and ears open because you never know what come on your way or whoever will come in to give you a helping hand. Very true. And I, we're, we're paraphrasing a little bit. I mean, true at Kathy, the direct quote was stop planning so much. And <laughs> so my interpretation of that is don't, don't over plan, you know, probably don't under plan either. I mean, you don't want to not have a plan, but, but you need a skeleton of uh, where you intend to go. So you, you have a backbone of a plan and, and you can uh, you know attach the, the smaller pieces as you take those incremental steps every day. Okay, that is the wrap for this uh, chapter, uh, Jeremy. Okay, thank you everybody for joining us. We appreciate uh, your support of this show and the series and uh, we look forward to seeing you again for the next episode. Goodbye for now until the next episode. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Goodbye.